Did theropod dinosaurs evolve the ability to fly? If you're joining this series without watching parts one and two, then what I'm about to say next isn't gonna make any sense. So please go to the link in the description and that will take you to part one. Now in this video, I want to look at one final objection to the creationist interpretation that I unpacked in the last two videos. Why do Sinusoropteryx and Archaeopteryx have strikingly similar body plans if they are separate created kinds that were created on separate days. Remember, Sinusoropteryx was a cursorial, non-feathered dinosaur that was land-bound. According to the Bible, it was created on day six of creation week, along with the rest of the land animals. Archaeopteryx, on the other hand, was a flyer and was thus created on day five of creation week, along with birds, pterosaurs, bats, and flying insects. Both animals had completely different ecological niches, so why are their skeletons so similar? Now, some of you might not be catching on, so let me explain. As creationists, we do not believe in what evolutionists call common descent. That means Sinusoropteryx and Archaeopteryx have very similar body plans because both animals share some ancestor from which both groups evolved. According to evolutionists, this is why both animals have similar skeletons, and I can see why they might believe that. Creationists, on the other hand, believe that Sinusoropteryx and Archaeopteryx were separate created kinds that were specially created at different times. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, it's because of common design, but there's a problem with that. Let me now include the skeleton of a chimpanzee. Notice that the chimpanzee skeleton looks nothing like the two theropods. All three of these animals are, according to creationists, separate created kinds. But the Sinusoropteryx and the chimpanzee were at least created on the same creative day, day six. They were also both land-dwelling animals and so possibly shared similar ecological niches. So why then does the skeleton of Sinusoropteryx look much more like the skeleton of Archaeopteryx than that of the chimpanzee? Notice that we can no longer appeal to a simplistic version of common design. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that common design can help solve this creationist dilemma. But our deference to the word design by definition means a commitment to something that was going on in the mind of God before he created anything. And since God doesn't discuss his design in scripture, then I believe Christians are free to hypothesize. So what if several different created kinds do actually share a single structural design? Now this would mean that all theropod dinosaurs and perhaps even birds are actually related. Importantly, this relatedness is derived from a common structural plan and has nothing to do with common ancestry through Darwinian evolution. Now remember, this is just a hypothesis. For a more thorough discussion on this, please go to the link in the description that will take you to part one of what I hope will be a multi-part series on this very subject. And if you have any ideas on this, I'd be happy to hear them. So please leave your thoughts in the comments section. Now in bringing this series to a conclusion then, we've seen that the actual evidence supporting the theory for the evolution of powered flight does not match the perception that we see in just about every educational platform and textbook. In fact, given the very real possibility for the secondary loss of flight in feathered dinosaurs, we are left with virtually no fossil evidence for the evolution of feathered flight at all. And this should not surprise us since this exact situation is also true when it comes to the supposed evolution of flight in pterosaurs and bats, the only other vertebrates apart from modern birds that have ever taken to the skies. You see, there are no good fossil intermediaries for either of these powered flyers. In one geological moment, you have land-dwelling mammals, from which bats supposedly evolved, and land-dwelling reptiles, from which pterosaurs supposedly evolved, 
and in the next geologic moment you get fully functional flying bats and pterosaurs. All of these data then fit very well within a creationist paradigm which would predict the absence of transitionary fossils connecting land-dwelling animals to their flying counterparts. Look, I don't think creationists have all the answers. There are literally tons and tons of unanswered questions out there. But when it comes to the origin of powered flight, I do think that the creationist interpretation accords better with the evidence, especially if we adopt some kind of structural design hypothesis that explains similarity of form across a multitude of created kinds. Okay, so that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Look, if you were in any way blessed by this video, then please help that Google algorithm along, hit the like button and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Of course, I've got a website, I've got a book if you're interested in more resources. And look, you may notice that I now have a PayPal button on the channel and in the description. Many of you may not know this, but I put many, many hours of solid research into these subjects to make sure we've got some really good creationist scientist material to work with. And that means a lot of time is spent away from work. So if you could donate any amount at all, I really appreciate that. Of course, as always, prayer is of supreme importance. So if you could spend just a minute and pray for me right now, I'd really love that. Thank you and goodbye.